So today we will talk about analog to digital converter. This is our next peripheral, analog to digital converter. Analog to digital converter. These things are very, very popular because with analog to digital converter, we convert analog signals to digitals so we can sample some signals and do some calculations on them. It's of course also called analog to ADC, analog to digital converter. Uh, how many of you have used analog to digital converter in your career or in your studies? So for last semester, there was a subject in uh, analog and digital integrated circuit, and uh, we had to build an analog to digital converter. Uh -huh. Yeah, using comparators. Aha, uh -huh. so you probably built something like... Uh, I, um, I built a uh, 4-bit ADC. Was it uh, of type successive approximation, no, 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 no. or no, no. was it flash? It was, not, uh, no, it, uh, it was just flash with uh, uh -huh. normal. Okay. Not with registers and counters, etc. It, it was just not. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, I see. Well, um, in the most cases that I know, the type of analog to digital converter that is built inside the microcontroller is successive approximation, uh, register or star analog to digital converter type. But in reality, Oftentimes, you don't really care, is it SAR or is it flash or is it something like that? You don't really care. You just use the one that is built in and you can't really choose one. In microcontrollers, the analog to digital converters are decent, meaning that they are relatively okay. They are not overly precise because if you really need high precision, you will use external analog to digital converter but the ones that are built inside the microcontroller are okay to, for example, measure voltage level of battery or, or temperature or something like that. It's, it's just okay. You just have to know how good they are. Uh, so let's just talk a little bit about these analog to digital converters, how they work. So inside the microcontroller, I'll draw a big microcontroller, usually in a, regular microcontrollers, some specific pins of the microcontroller have analog capability. Um, for example, the ones that we use in lab, only port D pins zero to seven can be used to sample analog signals. Only port D zero to seven, pin number zero to seven. However, newer microcontrollers have uh, a big um, switch matrix so that almost any uh, pin can be connected to an multi digital converter. But generally only limited number of pins can be used. And you would have a multiplexer with which you select which pin you forward to analog to digital converter. Uh, it goes to this thing called analog to digital converter. Sorry, I think it is drawn to the opposite side. Let's check out reference manual. Mm -hmm. Analog to digital converter here. Yeah, it's successive approximation. I think it's drawn something like this. Oops. Da. Okay, I'll draw it as a box because it's also differential. So analog to digital converter. And it basically gives you out a result. Uh, uh, that's a code. And analog to digital converter, you can select an input and you can basically compare it to a voltage reference. And I'll write it as V ref. And voltage reference is something that you compare the analog signal to. 
and the math is very very simple this analog to digital converter is linear so basically zero means zero volt and uh, uh that uh, max code means that it's equal to voltage reference so usually uh, adc max Okay, so and now about ADC maximum. Yes, I'll tell you about that. So usually analog to digital converter has a defined number of bits or uh, resolution. So for example, most modern are microcontrollers. You know, all modern microcontrollers have a 12 bit analog to digital converter. For example, Arduino, uh, has 10 bits ADC. So Arduino is 10 bit, these Atmegas. Uh, so for example, AFM32, which is the ones that we use in our labs has 12 bit uh, analog to digital converter. And these bits basically tell you what is the number, the maximum number that we can uh, get out of our ADC. So for example, for 12 bit uh, analog to digital converter, we just write two to the power of 12. It is 4096, uh, but since it's from zero, then we subtract one. So it's from zero to 4095 in our case. So I'll just write for 12 bit, how uh, that's say. Uh, that uh, max is equal to 2 to the power of 12 minus 1 is equal to 4095. So the result 0 volts is 0x00 zero zero zero, or just 0. And uh, voltage reference volts is equal to 0 is equal to 4095 is equal to zero X. And I think it is three FF in hex, but you know, it doesn't matter just, and everything in between is basically linear. So half of voltage reference is 2048 and so on. So let's just do a little bit of a calculation and maybe write some general uh, value. And also just to be clear, if the signal is greater than voltage reference, then this analog to digital converter basically saturates and gives the same value as if it was equal to voltage reference. So everything equal or greater than voltage reference is uh, gives this particular code. So I'll draw also greater or equal gives this code. Okay, so let's just do some calculation. Let's say we have, uh, and also I'll just give you immediate examples. Most uh, microcontrollers have somewhat decent voltage reference built in so that you don't need any external components to use analog to digital converter. You can just connect some analog uh, voltage and you can just sample it with the internal reference and analog to digital converter and get the result and it will be approximately fine. So in our case, in AFM32 uh, MCUs, which we use in labs, we have two, actually we have more than two. We have the following voltage reference options. First, 1.25 volts. internal reference. Next is a uh, 2.5 volt internal reference. Reference. But only if the supply voltage is greater than something like three volts. But only if greater equal to 3.0 volts. Because, you know, if you supply microcontroller from 1.8 volts, 
it cannot magically generate 2.5 volts. These voltage references are basically just some primitive type of uh, low dropout regulator or band gap. So you need higher voltage to turn it on. So if your supply voltage is 2.4 volts, you cannot generate 2.5 volts internally. It doesn't work that way. It's not a boost converter or something. So there is some uh, limit over which you need to have supply to have this 2.5 volt internal reference uh, working correctly. And you can check it out in the data sheet. Ta -ta -ta. Maybe I have even lied to you just now. Let's go to electrical characteristics of analog to digital converter. And what does it <coughs> say about internal voltage reference? So prob probably somewhere here it says, what is the minimum voltage that you need? For that. I think it was three volts, but maybe I'm mistaken. So you would just check it out again uh, later. Let's just leave it to that. So a third option is you can also sample the voltage relative to supply voltage. So the third one is supply voltage. Uh, so that, for example, if you have analog signals connected, you know, as a resistor divider to supply voltage, then you can also sub, uh, calculate relative to that. For example, I don't know, let's say I have a resistor divider, one of which is, for example, changing depending on the temperature. Um, if I connect this thing to voltage supply, then uh, and ground and connect it to one of these pins, if voltage, uh, if supply voltage goes up or if it goes down, the ratio between these uh, resistors stays the same. So this midpoint in analog to digital converter world will stay the same because if supply voltage is going up and also voltage reference is going up, then also the result will just stay the same because it's like a proportion between these two resistors. So, uh, so basically this is good if you have some uh, analog signals that are tied to supply voltage. So for example, if this is 10 kilo ohms and this is something like, or maybe one kilo ohm, and this is for example, NTC with 10 kilo ohms at uh, room temperature, uh, 25 degrees Celsius. So I don't know if, uh, so at the room temperature, this should give one half of the supply voltage. So the code for one half of voltage reference, which is supply voltage, it should give 2048 at 25 degrees Celsius. And if it's colder, then it, uh, the resistance increases, so voltage drop goes up and you will see higher number. And if it's hot, then it's uh, conductance increases. It drags the, this midpoint down. But if the volt supply voltage goes up or goes down, the ratio doesn't change. So you kind of cancel it out and it works fine. So this is why supply voltage can also be used for these microcontrollers as reference input. And another thing that you can select for voltage reference is microcontrollers are usually built in such a way that you can connect a very high precision external uh, voltage reference chip to some specific pin. So external voltage reference. And you can, inside the microcontroller, you can configure analog to digital converter to use a low noise, high precision voltage reference, which is connected to external pin. So for example, in this data sheet, we can go to 
pin definitions. We have a uh, model number 99, I think. Alternate pin out functionality. And somewhere here, it should say where to connect voltage reference. Maybe it says it in data sheet, I don't, I don't remember. Differential, ta, ta, ta. or was it analog to digital channel five? We can find it basically in this data sheet, but you can use uh, in a specific uh, pin, you can connect this analog to digital voltage reference. So much information. Okay, whatever. You will find it if you need it. Uh, but mostly people just try to use the internal reference when possible because it, you know it's cheaper. Ah, let's see. So maybe it will find it. Okay, it looks like external voltage reference connects to analog to digital converters channel six and seven. It's, you know, you can connect the differential uh, voltage reference to reduce common mode noise. Um, and if you do that, you connect between channel seven and channel six. So you kind of lose two channels, which is not that great. Uh, but if you only use positive side or single ended voltage reference, then you can connect it to just channel six and channel seven can be used for another signal. So you connect it like that. And we can check out that external voltage references aren't really that expensive. I think they cost some like 50 cents or something. Let's check out, for example, Texas Instruments uh, has pretty cheap chips and they're relatively good. So usually I just look at them. Uh, Precision voltage reference. They have some uh, products. Voltage references. Here, what I usually do uh, series voltage reference, I think this is what we need. I would just go to product, order by lowest price and just select the cheapest one because I don't want to overpay for something like that. And as you can see here, we can, for example, buy voltage reference, which outputs precise 4.9096 volts. And as you can understand, it is for the reason that if you connect it to one uh, to 12 bit analog to digital converter, one bit is like one millivolt because reference is 4.096 and uh, the code is from 0 to 4.095 so one bit is like almost precisely 0 0.001 volt and you can see that it only costs 25 cents at 1000 pieces so you can totally use it but you need voltage higher than uh, for volts, but these microcontrollers, they usually, for example, these EFM32 and others or ARM processors, basically they work up to 3.6 volts max, maximum. So you cannot connect a four volt voltage reference. So you would just use something like 2.048. In that case, each bit is 0 0.0005 volts, but it's cost the same. It's basically the same package, just different uh, device. So they're not really that expensive. If you can, you, you, you should use an external reference if you need high precision. And as you can see, it's voltage drift is 100 parts per million per degree Celsius. If you pay one cent more, you can get 50 uh, parts per million. So, you know, you just use your fav favorite flavor and use them like this. And so 
usually these voltage references are really simple. You basically connect, uh, and we will do some calculations as an example, 2.048 volts voltage reference. You connect it to supply voltage. And 2.048 volts go out and it also has ground connection. And always you will have to connect a small capacitor here at the input and also at the output to reduce the noise. Don't be lazy, always use these. They cost nothing. And also it will tell in the data sheet which one to use. And sometimes the value is defined in the data sheet because different sizes of capacitors filter out different frequencies. Smaller ones filter out higher frequency and vice versa. So here's the voltage reference and it says, please connect one to 10 microfarad of uh, voltage of uh, capacitance to the output so that it's, you know, it's uh, clean, clean of uh, noises and so on. Okay, so that's about external voltage references. I have used, sir, yeah. Sir, uh, is it the case that usually when the voltage reference is the lower the voltage internal reference uh, via REF, uh, the more the resolution of the ADC? Um, yes. <coughs> uh, each bit represents smaller voltage. However, usually this small voltage is more susceptible to noise. So actually we want higher voltage swings. So small noise doesn't uh, influence our results that much, right? So we don't really want to go into micro volts and nano volts because a lightning strike one kilometer away maybe will create some electromagnetic uh, waves that maybe will increase or decrease the voltage a little bit so, and also we have white noise, we have resistance noise, this thing is noisy. So we don't really want very, very small voltages. If we can, we should amplify them at the source so that uh, we work with higher uh, signal amplitudes if possible. Sometimes it's not possible, but mostly we try to do that. Okay, so yes. Uh, <coughs> higher, uh, smaller reference will work with smaller signals, but you know, to the limit. And also this microcontroller says that it wants the voltage reference, external voltage reference, at least 1.25 volts, right? Up to supply voltage level. So the microcontroller's ADC is built in such way that it only accepts at least 1.25 volt reference externally. So we have to also respect that for single ended. Mm -hmm. uh, something like that. Now let's do a little bit of calculations uh, just so that we understand what numbers we're talking about. And maybe I will even draw a table and we will try to uh, calculate things for several cases. So let's say we have a 12 bit analog to digital converter. Because most modern microcontrollers have 12 bit, I've seen some rare exceptions that are 14 bits and rare exceptions that are 10 bits, but most ones are just 12 bit analog to digital converters. So assuming 12 bit analog to digital converter, Let's just calculate some numbers. So let's say uh, at different voltage references. So we can select internal voltage reference 1.25 volts or 2.5 volts or two, for example, external one 2.048. Volts and supply voltage. 
the cc for example and we don't really know it we will just try to formula in it and uh, now um let's calculate first of all how much is one bit i'll write it in text so how much how many millivolts is one bit so it's like it's a resolution so so what is the smallest change in voltage that this analog to digital converter can detect so it it measures zero and what voltage will cause it to start to show, for example, one. And we can calculate it by dividing this voltage with the maximum number that it can show. So for example, voltage reference is 4095. So we, we divide this uh, number with that and we get the number. So 1.25 divided by 4095. Or is it with this number or with six? Hmm. Because we have four zero nine six pieces. So we get that one bit or the smallest signal is 0 0.0003 millivolts. And I'll just write it as is with a little bit of rounding. So smallest voltage step that it can detect is 0 0.00305 volts is equal to 0 0.305 millivolts. So very small signal. If input signal changes by 0 0.3 millivolts, our analog to digital converter will see the difference and increase the code by one. Okay, so at 2.5 volts, well, 2.5 is two times more than 1.25, so I can just multiply this number by two, and I see that it's 0, 0, 0, 0,00061. It. So it's approximately 0 0.00061 volts, 0 0.61 millivolt. Okay, now with this external voltage reference, um, 2.048 if we divide it in 2048 pieces which is the number of different levels that we can detect with our analog to digital converter then each bit is 0 0.001 volts And you would think, oh, this is a lower, uh, you know, this is a rougher step. However, oh, sorry, I didn't make it correctly. I divided by wrong number, so it's 0 0.005. So 2.048 divided by 4096 is 0 0.005 is 0 0.5 millivolts. But uh, this result will be much less noisy because this voltage reference is more precise and less temperature dependent. So you will get better results with external one. And for VCC, the general formula is VCC divided by 4096. Okay, so if we know the supply voltage, we can just calculate with this formula. Okay, so if we have some weak signal, which changes by 0 0.5 millivolts, we can detect the change. Um, now you will have to calculate the following thing. Um, so, so this analog input signal is for example, 0 0.3 volts. 
how much, what number will the annual of the digital converter show? So input signal is 0 0.3 volts. What will be the result of analog to digital converter? So 0 is 0 and 4095 is this voltage reference number. So what is 0 0.3? You have to just do some, you know, primary school algebra with proportions and try to calculate it. But we can also try to write a general formula. So one bit is 0 0.305, then how many bits will be 0 .0, 0 0.3 volts? We can just divide this with this and we will get how many steps from zero is the signal and that will be the result of analog to digital converter. So 0 0.3 volts divided by, um, 0 0.000305 is 983.6. Of course, analog to digital converter only throws out integers, so we have to round it up, so it will be 984. So if we connect 0 0.3 volts to an analog to digital converter's input, and we use reference 1.25 volts, then the analog to digital converter will say that the result is 984. Okay, so I can also write the general formula, which will be the following. Uh, uh, that's a code is equal to, and what we do is we divide voltage reference by number of bits, 4,000, you know, not number of bits, but the maximum value, 4095, and then multiply with voltage of signal. Uh, wait, did I write it correctly? I think I wrote it upside down. I love the digital code. Uh, it is 4095 divided by voltage reference. This is the correct way to write. And multiplied by voltage in. And I will put phrases here. So by dividing for 95 with voltage reference, we get to know the value of each code, and then we multiply it with voltage, and we get the result. So I'll just put it at the end here. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, is it possible for the voltage reference to be higher than the input voltage of the VCC? No, usually it is forbidden because if you connect it that way, the microcontroller will burn because there is electrostatic discharge protection diodes between uh, any of the pins and the voltage supply pin. And basically the analog to digital converter is made in such a way that you cannot feed more voltage into it than voltage supply. It just, you can just burn the microcontroller. So it's unfortunately forbidden. So if you supply microcontroller with 3.6 volts, then the maximum voltage reference value is 3.6 volts and that's all. And also the signals cannot go negative. That's also forbidden. So, sir, if the signals cannot go negative, then uh, the ADC won't be able to sample and sign you, right? 
So if you connect a, a, a signal that is less than zero to a microcontroller, you can burn the microcontroller because it is, uh, it's field effect transistors are connected in such a way that it's bad for them. So, so analog. Be able to post the... hmm? One more time. Uh, no, we, we can send you like uh, right? Any of this? Yes, uh, yes. Microcontrollers only work with voltages from zero to supply voltage, and that's it. If you connect anything outside of that range to the microcontroller, it uh, will maybe burn, maybe heat up, but it will definitely not work in the correct way. Okay, so um, there is a little bit of error usually because sometimes we divide by 4096 and sometimes with 4095. Uh, it's, uh, it oftentimes also confuses me, but uh, we just have to kind of cope with that. So can you calculate what is the analog to digital converters result if voltage reference is 2.5 volts and we try to measure 0 0.3 volts. So general formula is the maximum value that we can get divided by maximum voltage at that value. So we get uh, uh, something like bits per volt and then we multiply it with volts and then we get uh, the code. So 4095 divided by 2.5, we see that it's one volt is 1638 and we multiply it with 0 0.3 volts and we get that the result is 491. So if the reference is 2.048 volts, then if each volt, uh, each bit is 0 0.5 millivolts, you can kind of calculate it in your head. Then 0 0.3 volts divided by 0 0.0005, it will be 600. And here, basically you divide 4,095 by VCC and multiply it with the input signal 0.3 and you will get the result. Okay, so this is how we can calculate uh, from millivolts, what we can expect to be in this analog to digital converters result. Now let's calculate the opposite. So let's say we sample the signal and add it say result is, for example, some number is, for example, 1,800 and 39. What is the signal voltage? So we do analog to digital conversion and the analog to digital converter says 1839. What was the signal's voltage in millivolts? This is what we usually want to calculate. So can you calculate it? So if uh, 4,095 is this 1.25 volts, then- 0 0.3 volts. One more time. It'd be 0 0.33 volts. 0 0.3? Yes. Why, why do you think so? Uh, because 1,839 uh, bits, if, if we 
if you multiply 1839 multiplied by the voltage reference 1.25 and then divide it by 4096, we get 0.56. 0 0.56. Yeah. I think that it's correct. No? I'll just write it down. 0 0.56. Yeah, so I usually calculate it in this way. 1.25 is 4095. So I divide it with that. And then I multiply it with this IDC result. And I get the same result. So yes, it's correct. 0 0.56 volts. And let's just quickly calculate for the rest of the cases. And I'll write uh, the general formula. So uh, the signal is equal to VRF divided by 4095 and multiplied by analog digital converter code. Two point five divided by zero uh, four thousand and ninety uh, five and multiplied by one thousand eight hundred thirty nine is one point twelve volts. That is correct. Here is zero point zero 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 five multiplied by one thousand eight hundred thirty nine is 0 0.9195 and here general formula is there and i'll just write in uh, that case for example voltage at supply is the one that we talk about okay so we understand the resolution uh, anything bigger than voltage reference will just give 4,095, so it cannot show higher numbers than that. So that's about analog to digital converter. Um, next, talking about analog to digital converters a little bit more, let's check out the parameters of the built-in analog to digital converter so that we know, is it good, is it use, usable, and so on. So first of all, let's check out electrical characteristics of our analog to digital converter. So input range that it can convert is of course from zero to voltage reference. And in differential mode, only half of voltage reference minus and plus half of voltage reference, but about differential, we will talk a little bit later because it's not so simple. Uh, but Generally, now we want to know, for example, what's the power consumption? As we can see, it's not very big. It's, you know, something like 60 microamps. Uh, next, we're interested in how much electricity the internal voltage reference consumes. It's 65 microamps, so it's quite a bit. So analog to digital converter, usually we want to, if we run from battery, we want to turn on analog to digital converter wait a couple of milliseconds for it to heat up, then we sample and then we switch it off so we don't have these leakage currents. Another thing that we can check out about these analog to digital converters is that usually uh, they have a special input circuit so that it is more less prone to some noise and it's called sample and hold <coughs> uh, circuit. So basically we select that we want to sample one channel and then here in this sample and hold, basically what it has is input switch, 
and then a small capacitor and output switch. So when we want to do analog to digital conversion, then first is we want to take a snapshot of input signal. So we close input switch so that this signal charges up this small capacitor. And then when we're done, we open the switch and close the second switch and analog to digital converter only reads voltage from this capacitor. This way, even if the analog to digital converter works slowly and slowly calculates the analog signals code, if this signal is noisy, the noise doesn't get into the analog to digital converter because it basically takes a snapshot of the analog signal and then completely disconnects itself from the external signal. So it's good against the noise. However, what we need to check out is that uh, the input resistance of our signal is basically 10 kilo ohms. If we connect our capacitor to, for example, channel number zero, um, the current that charges up this capacitor it needs to flow through the top resistor and then it flows into this multiplexer and into the sample and hold and into this capacitor. So it charges slowly because this uh, resistor slows the current down. And as you know, the capacitor charges something like this. So it doesn't charge immediately to the voltage that is at the midpoint, it needs to charge through the resistor. So we need to wait some time for this uh, capacitor to charge up. And this is called uh, sampling time. And we can say that it is, for example, for example, 16 uh, analog to digital clock cycles. We can basically select from one clock cycle, two, four, eight, 16, 32, and so on. I think maximum was something like 256. Uh, it is also written in the reference manual, but generally you can just uh, control it. Over sampling grade select. Somewhere in the register, it basically says, okay, here it is. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, or 256 analog digital clock cycles. In my experience, if this resistance is, for example, one mega ohm, you need to wait something like 16 analog to digital clock cycles. It, because this capacitance is very, very small, only a couple of femtofarad, but still you need to wait a little bit and you can configure it in the programming. And when you have lab, you will have to do some experiments with this uh, thing. Uh, so we just wait a little bit and then we just sample it. And it's approximately the real voltage. It's maybe a little bit smaller, but if you wait enough, then it will be practically identical. So there's this sample and hold and it's basically in all analog to digital converters so that you know that you have to configure it. Um, yes. And the next thing is the conversion for successive approximation type is number of bits plus one number of bits plus one is the speed at which it can calculate the result. So if you have six bits of resolution, you can select analog to digital converter. For example, you don't need 12 bit uh, resolution. You are fine with six bits. You only need to, you know, approximately measure some voltage. Six bit calculation is seven clocks. Eight bit should be nine clocks, but apparently it just takes a little bit longer, it's 11. And 12-bit conversion takes 13 clocks because each clock 
calculates one bit of the result. So if you have 12 bit analog to digital converter, then each bit clock takes one clock to estimate and one extra clock. So uh, to this sample and hold time, you add successive approximation uh, register uh, sampling time, and then you get how long you need to calculate one full uh, result. And also analog to digital clock maximum frequency, for example, can be set usually in microcontrollers is approximately 10 megahertz, in this case, 13 megahertz. So in reality, if your microcontroller, let's just write an example, MCU uh, frequency is 14 megahertz, then analog to digital converter, you cannot clock it from 14 megahertz because it's more than 13. So you need to use prescaler and run it. Uh, must be run no more than Shredpast megahertz, 14 megahertz divided by two, which is seven megahertz. So each clock of analog to digital converter is actually only seven megahertz in this case. Um, so each tick is one seventh of a microsecond. So if you have 12 bits and sample and hold is 16, then you can add 16 plus uh, 13 is 29 at 16 floats some link time and 13 clocks of conversion and total. So total time of conversion, uh, total number of ticks is 13 and 16 is 29. And so in microseconds, we can calculate 0 0.0, oh, sorry, 7 megahertz uh, period multiplied by 29. And then we just multiply it with Lingolian. So it's four microseconds, 4.14 microseconds. As an example, I just calculated, for example, so time for full conversion is equal to 4.14 microseconds. So this way you can estimate how long it, you will have to wait for a analog to digital conversion to happen. And as you can see, it's a very small time. So you don't really worry about it. It's really, really, really fast. Um, and now let's check out our analog to digital converters precision and offset. So somewhere here it says, what is the offset? And as you can see, uh, because analog to digital converter that is built in, you know, it's not really perfect. What is offset is if you connect analog to digital converters input to ground, it should show zero. And the question is, what is its internal error? Um, and as you can see, it can be from minus three millivolts to plus three millivolts if there's uh, after calibration differential. And if it's uh, single ended, it's 0 0.3 uh, millivolts. So if we go back to our table and check out how much is one bit. So if we have analog to digital converters, uh, voltage reference 1.25 volts, then its internal offset error is 0 0.3, which is approximately one bit. So actually it's a very good result. It means that our result here is plus minus one. You know, we measure nine, eight, four, 
and the error is only one bit so it's a very small error but it's after some calibration has been done before calibration it can show a little bit wrong result uh, but it has calibration uh, done during manufacturing so it's a special algorithm which uh, calibrates the analog to digital converter and so the precision is just one bit it's it's really good you can't really get a better one but if you are using differential uh signal it's three millivolts so it's if you would use it in differential mode to calculate the difference between two signals then it's like 10 bit in precision so it's not really that great so all right for differential signals plus minus 10 bits uh, plus minus 10 steps so it says 984 but it might as well show 974 or 994 so 10 bits it's it's a big difference at bigger references its impact is smaller so it's a more rough uh, steps so here it's two times less uh, important this internal error um, next is non-linearity and this thing basically says if i double the signal voltage will it double the result or will it show a little bit off of the result and the differential non-linearity at external 2.4 voltage reference and three volt supply is not really that bad it's just one bit and it drifts no more than five bit uh, four uh, bits away or four steps away would be better so if you read 984 maybe it's actually 988 so it adds plus minus four to resu result and uh, integral non-linearity would be single-ended case so it's no more than plus minus three so you add these together and you can estimate what the real uh, precision of your result is and again not that fantastic if you need to measure something extremely precisely but if you are for example measuring a battery voltage and the battery is for example you know two volts you don't really care if it's two or 2.003 volts or 003 volts so oftentimes for these kinds of signals it doesn't really matter that it's a three millivolt difference if you're working with audio or if you're working with some precise signals then it's bad but if you're working with voltage of battery or some light sensor you don't care that it's three millivolts off and another thing that you can see here is the drift that is caused by temperature so you heat it up or cool it down it drifts away by for example no more than 0 0.03 uh, percent right so maybe it looks small but let's say you have a room temperature of 25 volts that's where it's measured and your device works for example at minus 10 so you add plus 10 volts so 25 minus 35 is minus 10 degrees celsius and if you multiply the number of degrees celsius with each degrees percentage error which is 0 0.033 i'll take the worst case scenario 0 0.033 then you can see that the offset will be 1.15 percent not that small anymore so if your signal is for example one volt you will actually measure 1.0155 volts so there will be a 15 millivolt offset if the temperature difference between the perfect room temperature and your actual temperature is for example 35 degrees so you 
temperature impacts this thing. This is why if we're working with precise signals where we need maximum precision, many numbers uh, behind the coma, if we measure temperature of some weak signals, then we would need to use external voltage reference and external analog to digital converter. That's just what you have to kind of remember. Okay, and here are some pictures that explain what they mean by these offsets and mistakes and errors. And that is about voltage. Uh huh. And here you can see also some typical performance uh, measurements. And now I need to tell you about differential signals in microcontrollers. So do you have some questions about single ended usage of analog to digital converter, where we basically just measure voltage reference to ground? Do you have some questions about this or is everything clear? Okay. If no more questions, then now let's turn to the differential signal measurement in microcontrollers. And even though the microcontroller can theoretically measure differential signals, there's a lot of limitations to how it can do it. So I'll just write uh, a small sub uh, title. So mostly all uh, analog to digital converters by design can be used for differential signal measurements, but the signals still cannot go under zero volts or over voltage supply volts. <coughs> So uh, again, we have our pins that can be used for analog signals. And usually they only work in pairs. So you have to connect, for example, one signal to channel zero and the second to channel one. And it only works in pair. The second pair is for example, channel two and three and the next one is channel four and five and so on. You cannot select, for example, zero and three. You can only select them in a limited way of combinations. And what the analog to digital converter basically does is it will just uh, connect. I'll draw it like this. Um, this will be positive, this will be negative. And it basically subtracts uh, the minus signal from plus signal and it, uh, sam it calculates the difference between the two signals <clears throat> relative to voltage reference, but actually only to half of voltage reference. <clears throat> so voltage, uh, half of voltage reference is the midpoint and then it compares to positive or negative uh, aside the result. So it works only like this. And so the formula is basically, mm -hmm, let's see. And also the result the result will only be 11 bits plus sine bit. So when you are using in differential mode, so first of all, inputs still limited between uh, ground and PCC. 
so you cannot measure negative voltages it's forbidden these voltages are negative only relative to one another uh, that's one limitation and second we uh, you only get 11 bits plus sign so the result is from minus 2048 to plus 2047 like this you don't get all of the range um mm -hmm. and uh, the reference is slashed by half so let's see it's written in the reference manual differential Mm -hmm. uh, here are the results in differential conversion so for example if the difference between the signals was half of input reference then you get 200 and uh, 2047 and if it was minus half of voltage reference, you get minus 2048. It's just the limitation of practically all of these uh, analog to digital converters. So don't think that your voltage reference is 1.525 volts. So you can measure up to minus 1.25 uh, volts. It doesn't work that way. And, uh, you know, differential measurements are not that often in simple devices so some people just live their lives without ever using the differential analog to digital converters but in audio you always use differential uh, signals so you just have to take this into account so let's just uh, check out an example where we would want to use a differential signal we would we could use a di differential signal to, for example, uh, measure the current that flows through a DC motor, which is an H bridge. So let's try to draw it. So we want to control a motor, a small motor, nothing fancy, a three volt motor, and we want to turn it both clockwise and counterclockwise. To do that, we need to uh, change the polarity of voltage and we can do it in H bridge. So we have MOSFETs here. Uh, this will be, for example, P channel MOSFET. Da, P and like this and here is supply voltage and then uh, we have the motor and to make it rotate in the opposite direction we want to connect it to uh, later to zero And in the opposite uh, end, it's the same. But to measure the current, we would put a small resistor here. And we will just measure the voltage across the resistor, which can be both positive and negative. And this way, we will uh, know the current. For example, we select 0 0.1 ohm. So each 0 0.1 volt will be like 1 amp current. and we will be able to calculate it. So, and here we will put another MOSFET. For example, here will be ground. And 
out here is like this and uh, finally like this <laughs> so let's say we want to uh, operate the motor in the clockwise direction we open this transistor and this transistor so the current flows from VCC through the motor through the resistor so resistors voltage drop will be in this direction and through this transistor to the ground and motor spins and when we switch off these uh, transistors it stops spinning and if we want to operating in the opposite direction we open this mosfet and this mosfet so from vcc it flows through here through the resistor in the opposite direction so the voltage drop will be the opposite and it flows in the opposite direction through the motor so the motor spins in uh, the opposite direction and through the sec uh, the fourth uh, transistor to the ground so this is a very classical schematic of h bridge uh, control and what we can do is take voltage from this resistor and connect it to analog to digital converter in a differential connection so when the vo uh, the motor spins in one direction, so uh, this voltage is bigger and this one's smaller. And when it uh, rotates in opposite direction, the current flows up opposite direction and the voltage drop is opposite. But in both cases, voltage is still limited between ground and VCC. If we supply microcontroller and uh, motor from the same voltage, so both voltages are still within the correct range but this way we can measure the current in both ways and so if this is the positive and this is the negative then when for example when it's red it will be positive result and when it's blue when it's the opposite direction it will give negative result and this way we can measure it uh, so this would be an example where we would use a differential analog to digital converter if we have some signal that current can flow both ways, both directions, and we want to measure it and calculate it there. Okay, so I hope you understand that. Now let's just do some small calculations um, about you know, some limits of these values. So in this case, we need to respect the analog to digital converters limitation. And so we have to remember that, uh, I'll write it like this, delta V in, must be smaller than one half of voltage reference. Um, so let's say we're going to be cheap. We will use internal voltage reference of 1.25 volts. Uh, for example, we don't really need to know precise current we just want to detect whether the motor is turning or not. If the motor is, for example, stalled, if it's clamped and doesn't move, then it will have some high current, short circuit current, and we will see a big current. And if it's spinning, it is uh, 
it's not short circuit current, so the voltage will be smaller and we will know that the motor is spinning okay. So we will use this not very precise internal voltage reference and not great internal analog to digital converter just to detect whether the motor is spinning or if it's stuck and it's stalling. So we will use 1.25 voltage reference so we can immediately calculate that the voltage maximum drop um, on the resistance, so V resistance max should be smaller than one half of 1.25 volts equal to zero point six two five volts. So that's our limiting thing. On the other hand, we don't really want uh, the voltage drop to be zero point six two five volts because then less voltage remains for the motor. You know, uh, you have to remember the Ohm's law. So if voltage of power supply is for example, 3.3 volts and the motor is designed for 3.0 volts you can buy three volt motors in uh i don't know ebay or amazon um, but three volt motors is kind of a standard motor we can only allow 0.3 volt voltage drop on this resistor so it's good our voltage reference is only two times bigger uh, than the maximum voltage drop that we will allow there. And so what I will write is uh, from motors data sheet. I just recently used a similar motor, so I'll write it from my memory. In, volt in the data sheet, motor uh, voltage 3.0 volts working current is zero point, it's basically 50 milliamps and stall current is 150 milliamps. So short circuit uh, current is 150 milliamps. So from this, you can calculate the resistance So optimal resistance would be such that at 150 milliamps, we have this 0.3 volt drop uh, so that, you know, we can measure it. So optimum uh, resistance of a resistor will be 0 0.3 volts divided by uh, 150 milliamps equal to is two ohms. So very small resistance, uh, but that was kind of to be expected. And so we connect two ohms here and we and it will have some small voltage drop and we will be able to detect it with our differential analog to digital converter. So now we can calculate uh, that's a, so the ADC code at uh, 150 milliamps, 150 milliamps uh, multiplied by two ohms equal to 0 0.3 volts. Reference is 0 0.625 volts. So the code will be, uh, 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.6625 is the ratio and we multiply it with the range and the range is 2047 to the positive side. And the code will be 982. So if the code is approximately 982, then we know that the motor is stalling. <coughs> so I'll write it equals two, 
so how did we calculate the code? <coughs> Reference voltage divided by range multiplied by, uh, sorry? code divided by reference voltage multiplied by the voltage that goes in. So it is 2047 divided by voltage, which is 0 0.625, and then multiplied by the voltage drop by 0 0.3 volts. <clears throat> I'll recalculate it. 0 0.625 multiplied by 0 0.3, so 982.983. So if we see this at the analog to digital converters output, we know that the current is approximately 150 milliamps and the motor is stalling and it's bad. And we can, for example, switch it off and I don't know, blink a red LED that something is wrong and analog to digital converter code at 50 milliamps. <coughs> we can just divide the previous code by three, but we'll just try to calculate it manually again. So 50 milliamps multiplied by two ohms, uh, we will get the voltage drop on the resistor is 0 0.1 volt, 50 times two is 100 amps, milliamps and it's 0 0.1 uh, volt. And analog to digital converter code is equal to 2047 divided by 0 0.625 multiplied by 0 0.1 is 2047 divided by 0 0.625 multiplied by 0. It's 327 or 328 if we round it up. So if we see the code is 328, then we know that everything is working correctly. <coughs> And if we switch the motor to spin to the opposite direction, well, in these cases, we would use 2048, but you know, the difference is so small that we just don't recalculate it and it's approximately the same. It will just have a negative sign. So we can measure the direction, we can measure the amplitude and we can get the analog to digital codes. And as we can see, we can clearly detect if the motor is spinning because 328 is much greater than zero. So we don't have to worry about it. If we did the calculations and we got that, for example, the code would need to be five, then it's a very small code. It's similar to the noise. We calculated that the noise is approximately 10 to 15 bits. So this wouldn't work we wouldn't be able to measure such small voltages, but voltages like 50 milliamps or 100 mil, uh, 50 millivolts or 100 millivolts can easily be detected by analog to digital circuitry. So we can use it for these cases where we cannot use the analog to digital converter that is built into the microcontroller. I'll write it in red as an example. Uh, we can measure temperature using thermocouples. Produ these produce approximately 50 microvolts per degree Celsius. And this one is much smaller than analog to digital converter noise. So for example, thermocouple signal, you cannot measure with this analog to digital converter because first of all, it's a resolution uh, analog to digital converters resolution is 300 microvolts. volts. 
So each bit is much greater than the thermocouple signal per degree Celsius. So you cannot really use it to measure temperatures from thermocouple. And there you would need an external voltage amplifier and probably also external analog to digital converter with a very silent voltage reference. So I give you an example where you cannot use internal analog to digital converter and it is to measure thermal couples uh, temperature signal. And I guess, yeah, all right, here. Example where you cannot use internal, oh, that's a ADC. Okay, do you have some questions about this example? So if you don't have any questions, I guess that's all for today. So I hope I explained some things about unlock to digital. Uh, sorry, to you. Uh, yeah. I'll ask like the, 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 the resolution means the, the, the voltage, uh, like the amplitude per bit, right? Yes, exactly. That's the resolution. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So amplitude per bit and it's just 300 microvolts. So you will see the temperature needs to increase by some like seven degrees for or six degrees for you to see a single bit change. But if the noise of the bits is some like 15, then you will not see anything. So yeah.